How about we take a look at the backfield position power rankings, according to our pal Nick Shuck, who joins us every Thursday. Taking a look here, the Dolphins are making the list with their leading rusher, Miles Gaskin, along with uh, Matt Breida. Chargers there as well with Eckler and Kelly. As you get a look at uh, Raheem Mostert and Jarek McKinnon, although for the 49ers at number three, although that it's going to be all Jarek McKinnon, it would seem, uh, due to injury this week for the 49ers against the Giants and everybody looking up at the duo of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, who went off on Thursday night football against the Bengals in week two. So let's say hello to around the NFL writer, Nick Shook. Nick, glad to have you here with us. I know you're using Next Gen Stats to kind of help us get a look at these top 10 backfields. I want to start with the backfield duo in Pittsburgh. We certainly saw a lot more of Benny Snell in week one. James Conner comes back from the injury in week two, has a big run to help seal that victory for Pittsburgh towards the end of the game. Uh, what excites you about that group? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Rhett, because as an NFL roster constructor, you, you always value depth, and the Steelers have proven they have quality depth at running back, but these guys Benny Snell and James Conner have found success in two very different games. Strangely enough, in similar styles, Benny Snell and James Conner both rank sixth and fifth in rushes outside of the tackles at 6.2 and excuse me, 6.3 and 6.4 yards per carry. And Snell, surprisingly, found success rushing against lighter boxes, which I guess shouldn't be that much of a surprise because less defenders makes it easier. But when when Conner left in, in Week One against the Giants. Uh, the, the Giants then focused their defensive efforts elsewhere, which created a, a better situation for Benny Snell. He took advantage. He had 6.2 yards per carry against those lighter boxes, six or fewer defenders in the box. That's good enough for fifth in the NFL. So the Steelers know that, well, if they don't have James Conner, they've still got a good option back there. And if they've got them both, they've got two very good options in the backfield. So they should be really encouraged uh, by the strength of their backfield through two weeks so far. And if you're a fantasy owner of James Conner, you should be feeling really good this week in their week three matchup against the Houston Texans, who right now are not so much boasting the 31st ranked rush defense right now uh, in the league, giving up about 198 rushing yards per game. All right, let's move on uh, to another group here, another backfield duo that you're interested in that has me intrigued as well in Tampa. Talking about Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones, who Bruce Arians has certainly said that Ronald Jones was going to be the bell cow this year leading up to the season. But, Nick, it sure felt like Leonard Fournette started to take over, especially in the second half of the Bucks' first win of the season on Sunday. Yeah, I'm not sure Bruce Arians was fully aware or expected uh, Leonard Fournette to become available right before the start of the season. So I think that changed things a bit. But through the first four, five and a half quarters of the regular season, Leonard Fournette wasn't much of a factor. It still looked like Ronald Jones would be the bell cow. He had the first rushing touchdown uh, in, in week two, as you saw right there, against the Panthers. And then Leonard Fournette set himself up with a reception and got his own touchdown. And since then, he's exploded. He had 83 of his 103 total yards in the second half uh, Sunday against the Panthers. That, of course, coming with the 46-yard touchdown run. And interestingly, that helped him flip his rushing yards over expectation from the negative, which is negative 14 after week one, in well into the positive at plus 63, really helping vault this backfield up into the top 10 and making a really encouraging uh, next few weeks ahead for the Buccaneers who suddenly have a rushing attack. And uh, this should be feeling pretty good for Leonard Fournette as they get set to head to Denver and take on the Broncos. In his only previous meeting with Denver, how about a career-high 29 rushes, 225 rushing yards. Uh, that should make Bucks fans feel pretty good ahead of this matchup against the Broncos uh, this week, especially you start throwing in LaShawn McCoy in there with some of the passing game stuff that he can do uh, as well. It's a, it's a really interesting backfield there in Tampa. Let's get to the best backfield of the week right now. And look, it's hard to argue with you after what we saw Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb combined for against the Bengals on Thursday night. What impresses you most about this crew? You know, this, in theory, really shouldn't work, right? I mean, two star running backs, two running backs who landed at the top of the rushing uh, statistics in the last two or three years. Kareem Hunt leading the league in rushing in 2017. Nick Chubb finishing second in rushing last season. This shouldn't work, and yet it is working. Right now, they're first and third in rush yards over expectation uh, in the entire NFL. And because of this, the Browns lead the entire NFL in rush yards over expectation per attempt. How are they doing it? ripping off big runs. Nick Chubb has eight runs of 10 plus yards. That's the most in the NFL. And Kareem Hunt, well, that's about among running backs for Nick Chubb. And Kareem Hunt has six runs of 10 plus yards, which is tied for second most in the NFL. And here's the best thing about it, why it probably works when it maybe shouldn't. 
these guys aren't competing against each other. They're really, they've become very close friends and they're working in tandem. Now Chubb was the bell cow in week two and then Kareem Hunt came in in the fourth quarter and was the closer, gained the majority of his yards in the final quarter. But the coolest thing about it is they're, they're really close and uh, and that's really helping them perform well. And it's also something you can read more about at NFL.com slash Chubb. I love it, and I will do it. Uh, the Browns, the only team in football right now with two running backs with over 150 rushing yards apiece, although they'll get a pretty good test this week with the Washington football team ahead in week three, 12th best rush defense in football. Nick Shook, glad to have you here with us, man, every Thursday on NFL Now.